Hello, my name is David Cole and I'm Technical Director at Sunfield Penstock Solutions and today I'm going to talk about spill control. So, spill control really is um, how do you control a spillage? It doesn't matter what that spillage is, but if you lose a material that could be harmful to the environment, how do you control it? So really, when we're looking at spill management, spill control, I mean, you could really say all of us because we can all have spillages at home, we can have spillages of paint or something, anything. But really, let's, let's just look at industry. When we're looking at it really is, if you've got a process at your business which could be harmful to the environment, really, you've got to start thinking about what if. What happens if that gets spilled? Where will it go? Is there a risk to the environment? You're, all you're looking at is, can I stop it leaving my site and causing a pollution event. So I think as we look at spill control on a bigger scale, we're looking at the businesses that actually have something on site that could cause an impact to the outside environment, something that would cause damage. Because what you've got to remember is, if you have a pollution, if we just take simple, see, a litre of paint, but you're a business, you're a large business, you spill a litre of paint, it's emulsion paint, and it ends up in the local stream. That's going to impact the environment. People are going to see it, it potentially is going to cause an issue to the fish, kill some fish, kill some wildlife, damage the, um, the natural environment. You're going to get prosecuted or you're going to have to pay at least for the clear up of the damage that you've done. So really anything that can be spilled that could cause an impact on the environment as a business, whoever you are, you need to be thinking about what is the potential harm that I could cause and am I able to mitigate and control it? We as a business at Penstock Solutions, we work with anybody. We'll work with anybody that actually gives us a call. So it doesn't matter who they are. We work with restaurants, right up to multinational um, uh, engineering companies, to, to milk companies, all sorts. But we don't mind if a company is interested in spill control, pollution control, because they're focused on the fact that we don't want to ha that to happen. We're happy to work with anybody. So normally when we get a call, it's normally the environmental manager, she managers that are actually dealing with health and safety, the environment. They're the people that normally get in contact with us with a specific question. They've probably been approached by the EA and told, you need to consider Syria 736. And they've got a clue what that means. And they've, they've found us out, they've tracked us down on the internet, they've found what we do, and they've gone, right, these guys can help us. So we get a call about that. But it also can be engineering managers, it can be company directors, it can be anybody really that's building or designing or running a plant and business that something's gone wrong and they need some help. What I'd really like to happen is, is instead of getting calls when things go wrong, we actually get some calls when things are right, they just need to be implemented as new designs. So as a business, we look at spills. I mean, in our own business, we have to look at control of spills. But when we're looking with a client, we're looking at controlling bill, um, spills. We're looking at what's the risk? Where could it go? Where are the pathways? So we always look at it, risk, um, we always look at it, the source, which is what is the material? We always then look at the pathway. How, how can that spill get off site? What's the route it's going to take? And where's it going to go? What's the receptor? Is it going to end up in the land, which is a pollution incident as well? Is it going to end up in the local stream, brook, local golf course, for instance? We need to look at all that to then decide at what level do we need to start looking at their risk. So as controlling spills comes at all levels. If we just look at what I call maintenance spills. So this is a guy changing a gearbox on a car or perhaps in a, in a factory changing some equipment. And they might have a, a small, small minor spill, which is just something that happens every day in part of the process. So he spills a litre of oil, he spills a litre of a chemical. Those are what we call local spills and are dealt with really quite well by use, the use of a, a spill kit, which is something that most businesses have got. What we're really interested in is, is those events that take place where you're talking at larger volumes or a volume of something that's spilt could be something like a cutting oil, which is quite a common one. So you spill a cutting oil outside, and at the same time you spill it, it's raining. So it gets washed away really quickly, and you've got a material that as soon as it reaches a water course, it actually multiplies into tens of thousands of, its, of what you originally had, and you can't control it because it's actually emulsifies in the water. So we're interested in those elements rather than the small little spills. So when you've got those types of events, you've got the, obviously the small part, which is your spill kit. Then as you move up, you're looking at how do you actually contain an incident. Now that might mean that you need a control in an area where you've got one of our toggle block systems, which blocks the drainage and actually uses the drainage as the, as the attenuation, as the catchment point. Now part of that idea and that whole philosophy of that equipment is, 
is that if you've got, say, a thousand litres of a chemical that's spilt and you can contain it at a drain point and actually use the drain as a temporary containment point, you can actually then pump that out, put that back into a barrel, and instead of having a material that the spill gets created, which is now a waste, which has really got to be disposed of as a has waste, you potentially now have a material that could go back to the manufacturer, be reprocessed, cleaned, and reused again. It doesn't necessarily mean that material is actually waste. So spill control is achievable by everybody. There is no real, to us as a business, there's no real, it can't be done. Every business, it doesn't matter where they are or what they are, you can control every element of it. What you have to do is you have to accept that there is a risk. If you accept there is a risk, you're a long way there because what you're saying is you can see it. Once you can understand that there is a potential of a risk, you either move your process so you move it into an area where there isn't a drain or there isn't some soft ground where it could just spill into you actually protect that point. And then once you've element that, if you can't get rid of that specific part of the problem, then put in protection, i.e. put in, if it's just minor spills, you can put in a spill kit and soak it up. If it's going into something that could potentially can be large, let's put in some containment valves, let's put in some modeling, let's look at the tertiary, let's look at the curving, let's look at some form of containment. Everything that actually is there can be achievable, uh, not at the cost really of if an incident takes place and you actually do have a pollution incident, the cost of that now is phenomenal compared with actually prevention. So our recommendations really are to follow our six point process, which is first of all, understand the regulations, then understand how those regulations impact on your particular business. Carry out a risk assessment, which really looks at what your particular risks to your business there are from a pollution incident. Then look at how you actually design a system to contain that pollution event, no matter what it is. Then implement that system, put it in place, build it, get it installed, get it working. The next bit then is to monitor, maintain, and document what you've done and be prepared as guidances change and technology improves to move your system along so it actually continually improves and just keep it under control. If you'd like to know more, why don't you just contact us on www.penstocksolutions.co.uk.